Hi dear viewer, yet another exciting Friday. How are you? Praise the living God. This is the family hour. It happens every Monday to Friday. And of course we have exciting things. Let me briefly, briefly take you through. Take you through. Uh, we have on Monday education and career as our theme. On Tuesday we have family health. On Wednesday we have family finance and wealth. And uh, on Thursday, we have leadership and governance. And today, Friday, parenting. That's why we are here. Join me. Welcome a great couple that has come to share with us. Oh, my God. We are so blessed to have them here. The zero is, oh, my God. This is like a blessing. They're so smart, dressed in black. And someone is in black and white. Oh, my God. This is a blessing to have this great couple here. And our topic of discussion today is building strong bonds with your children. Wow, they're the right people to talk about this today. Why don't you join me? Welcome Dr. Paul together with his beautiful wife, Mrs. Esther Ziwa. Yes. You are welcome. <laughs> Thank you, Claire. Was, Thank you, you look Claire. great. Thank, Thank you. You also much, look great. Too much. <laughs> <laughs> it was random. I just like this. I just, I just, wow. Please quickly say hello to our viewers and then we start the show. Hello viewers, um, we are really blessed to be here, so I thought, I hope uh, this goes very well and I hope you enjoy yourselves. We are having fun. Thank you. Already? Mm -hmm. You guys see, I told you yeah. that. Yes, yes. hello <laughs> viewers. I agree with what he just said. <laughs> <laughs> Esther. Uh -huh. All right, Esther. So Dr. Paul and Esther Z were a born again Christian most importantly. Yeah. They fellowship with their community church. St. Jacob, St. Jacob's Makenke, Gaiaza. Yeah. Paul is a veterinary doctor who is passionate about companion animals, pets like dogs. Wow, you need to tell us more about that. <laughs> dogs, cats, parrots, name it. Esther is a public health researcher affiliated with the School of Public Health, Makerere University. Makerere, oh yeah! Oh yeah! <laughs> <laughs> with a focus on injuries and road safety research, she's at the tail end of her. Wow! PhD studies. <laughs> Permanent academic. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say that. Look at Paul. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! I'm so happy to have you here. And they have beautiful daughters. How are they doing? Very well. Wow! Wow! Very well. Wow! So happy to have mm. you here. Yeah. Wow! Mm. How is life? How is everything? Mm. It's uh, it's good, right? Yes, it is. <laughs> and and the girls are on holiday now, so yeah. I'm happy. I'm happy the topic um, mm. comes out right about now mm -hmm. when they're on holiday and we have time with them. So and they're watching. Yeah. Ooh, yes. Say they're hello. <laughs> Hi, Rachel. Hi, Monica. <laughs> <laughs> you did it so well. It's really exciting. Mm -hmm. I am so excited, and I'm very happy to have you here, dear viewer. As usual. My name is Claire Buente, your world's favorite host. This is a very, very blessed night. It's a very exciting moment. We are talking about a very good topic. Like they are already excited to share what they have in store for us. And of course, I will not forget to remind you that this show is in partnership with Life Ministry Uganda. You can always check them on their social social media platforms. You will find out more about Life Ministry Uganda. And also I want to appreciate you and thank you very much for celebrating us, for participating in the media day. Thank you very much for praying. Thank you for contributing. Thank you, thank you very much. As Church of Uganda Family TV, we cannot thank you enough. And as the family hour, we clap for you. Thank you, our dear viewers. We love you. Please keep supporting us. Keep praying for us. Keep being in our circles. We love you and we are ready to give you the best, best Christian content on your screens. Yeah, wow, today. Now let's go into our talk of our family hour today. Our beautiful topic is building strong bonds with your children. And to discuss this is a great couple. I'm just joined by the Z words. 
It's a joy once again to have you here. Mm -hmm. And just like you already know, our topic is building strong bonds with your children. But for starters, I keep asking myself, like, how do you know that your bond with your children is actually strong? Or how do you know that it's weak? Yeah. You understand. Another viewer is also one. <laughs> yeah. How do I even know evaluate my <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's a. How do I evaluate? Yeah. PhD. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Claire, that's a very interesting uh, first question to begin the discussion. I think one of the indicators that your bond is a strong one is how your children relate to you in your presence, how much information you know about them. Do you know? how they respond to different situations do you know their favorite colors for us for the start mm. do you know their wildest dreams how much detail do you know about them for me that's the indicator of how strong a bond is because when when you're close to someone mm. you're able to predict and say oh Claire loves eating mm. this she mm. loves to wear yellow mm. she's not going to be happy about this you know but a weak bond is where that information, as much information surprises you and you get it from third parties. The teachers at school tell you something and you're like, no way, this can't happen because you, you, you're taken by surprise and you're like, I, I did not see this. But everyone else is like, really? This, this is what your child is. This is what she likes. This is... So when your guesses are... 80% of the time wrong. Mm. It means you, you don't know your child. You, the bond is a bit weak. And mm. also when they are not confident enough to tell you details about themselves. Mm. And they'd, they'd rather hide that information away from you. It, it, it means the bond, the bond is a bit, is a bit weak. Mm. The, there's a reason why they, are not, they don't want to tell you those details. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, <clears throat> that's a, 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 a good uh, overview. Also, um, you want to you you want to feel connected to them. You know, like um, when you're in, when you're in the same space with them, how, do you feel the connection? Do you communicate properly when 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 they're talking to you, and then you talk to them back? Because sometimes. If you've not been with them for a long time, maybe you've been so busy and then you come and you just feel like we're not connecting here, you know, mm -hmm. especially as they grow, even the younger one, both of them. So you, you, you're not really understanding them, you're not understanding what they're doing or what they're trying to express. So there's just not that, you know, that's when you realize that you actually, you're not there or you need to work on something. You need more time together with them, so something like that. That's one of the ways how you can tell: Are we actually? Do we have a cross bond, or don't we, or something? Yeah. Mm. yeah. Wow. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, mm. as you were sharing, it looks like you have to pay attention to the kids. Mm. Get to know why are they behaving different? How? Mm. Why are they behaving like this? And that means you have to be in the same space. Okay. Now, yeah. thinking for people, for parents who are really busy. For example, they wake mm. up very early in the morning to hit the road then come back late in the evening the yeah. kids have slept so how yeah. do they go about it <laughs> i guess phd you know. <laughs> claire you're having me on this one Today i have you properly you're really having me i think i, I that shouldn't have a period in my life but um well First of all, it's unfortunate that we have to spend all those hours away, leave early morning and then come back late at night because most of the close bonds are nurtured by time. So then we have to be deliberate to catch up with the lost time. Some of the ways can be through the use of technology, some video calls during the day, one or two to just catch up and you have to be intentional about those and just say, I'm just checking in, what are you doing? What has, you know? And then the weekends, try not to keep your weekends occupied. I know there's, there's so much that's calling for our attention, but if you really must nurture the close bond with your children, 
the weekend is one of the best moments. You can be intentional about doing activities together, moving out with them, keeping them in your space on the weekend, and then catching up on the big deals in the week. You know, asking them intentional questions. What, mm -hmm. what, what made you happy this week? What was your highlight? You know, mm -hmm. and and really celebrating with them the highlights and the low mo moments. And you know, if mm -hmm. your job cannot allow you to catch up with them in the week, I think that would be one of those. Mm -hmm. Maximize the weekend. Maximize the mm -hmm. the Saturday and Sunday, and then in the week we thank God for technology. So make those calls and they will learn how to talk with you over the the video calls and they will learn to express themselves for me that that's one of the ways i would yeah i think also i mean following on what she said um a particular example just yesterday we had friends come over home um and one of one of one of the parents uh, is studying away so they have to call the children, even when the time zones are different, in the morning as they drive to school and, you know, put the video call she was saying every morning. So, for example, maybe there it's about 4 a.m. and you're burnt out, but then you say, I have to, I am, I am a parent and I have to make a strong bond. So, uh, they call and then they, they say a prayer in the morning and then the children go to school. So, the parent is not there which is, I mean, I think it's a very tough situation to be in. It's really, really tough. But then you have to kind of compensate uh, as much as much as you can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Paul. And now, um, well, you're so passionate. I just like this, you're so passionate. That, you know, companion animal. You <laughs> talked about that. <laughs> so, uh, and I believe every, every parent out there has something that they are really passionate at and they really love it dearly. And now that means if you have a weekend for the things you love and children here are like a full-time job. So yeah. what do you do? Do you, you know, let go of your passions and concentrate on your children? What happens now? Well, um, if you can find a middle ground, that would be okay. That would be the best option, finding a middle ground. But I want us to recognize that these children are, we, we are not growing any younger. And the seasons of our children have different needs. When you, are ba when, when you have babies, that's, they need you almost full time. And some of the things you have to sacrifice if you really want this bond. Mm -hmm. Some of the of the passions you don't totally uh, like let go, but then you allow that for this season I'm not able to catch up with this. But as they grow older, they start to get into your space, but also create their own time to play, and you just have to monitor mm -hmm. and then come in here and there. And you know, a parent that's parenting a university child, you know, has different needs and is able to have more time on their own. And later you have an empty nest and they are married <laughs> and you have phone calls with them, but you can spend hours in the golf course just playing golf, you see. So the seasons change and the level of sacrifice into the seasons changes as well. I, I, like when Paul and I were dating, we loved to go and watch rugby matches mm. and wow. I think you know <laughs> and we also we love to go and watch well, bands <laughs> they are also there there within yeah. the pets actually also send their greetings <laughs> <laughs> viewers cats and dogs wow. but we also loved to watch bands quella and different bands in the evening once in a while but when our babies came, I think we started to readjust our programs. Mm -hmm. And we also started to make plans with, in spaces where our children would be accommodated. So that, for example, if we are going for a fellowship or a, an evening out, their children are also welcome and the space is also child friendly. Because sometimes there are people you're in the same season with, so it's easier to be like so mothers how do we fit this in so i think that also becomes a bit of a season where you're just hanging around mm -hmm. you know young parents and and their children and your children are playing with each other 
and it also becomes a pastime. You mm. you don't feel like you're missing out a lot because you've decided to make the most of this season. Mm. So yeah. you don't let go of your passion. Mm. Some you catch up with them, mm. but you honestly can't be playing all the games and being out all the time and catching up. And your children are, are growing every day. They are turning three months, six months, one year, three years. This time won't come back. Mm -hmm. And time is going to come when they won't be in your space. Yeah. And you won't recover this other time. Mm -hmm. And this foundation that you build now will be the reason that you will have phone calls and things to talk about as the years go by. Mm -hmm. So there's an element of sacrifice. Exactly, mm. there is. Thank you, thank you very much, Esther. And I like uh, what you just mentioned. This is just a season, and time is going to come when this, this season has changed. So enjoy it while it still lasts. Yeah. Well, yeah. thank you very much. And to you, uh, Dr. Paul, we are talk from the time we entered here, we are talking about bonding, bonding, bonding. Yeah. So, at what age does this start? Like, when should parents start to build this bond with their children? Um, well. What I also, what I've heard and believe and have done, um, usually pe people will tell you that right from when you know that the baby is, th the baby is there. Wow. So, uh, in the stomach, I mean, mm. like the baby Still <laughs> is in there, yeah. Oh, so, yeah. so, I mean, then you will start to, to mind them, you know, you can even boldly say good things about mm -hmm. them yeah. and things like that. So you already start. And um, <clears throat> I think for, for the parent, it then gets to become easier because they've started mm -hmm. when you don't have to call this child to you, the child is already there with you. And then you just learn even as they grow older, I mean, you've already started working on it. So it gets so much easier for you. Um, uh, because you, you you already started when, when they were in there. Some yeah. people say when they are born, mm. but already when they are in there. They say that um, they know their parents' voices. I mean, when they are born, they are really calm. I mean, someone comes and says, ah, uh, like if they are crying, and then they will know the mother's voice already, they will know the father's voice already. They will they will be familiar with the music um, that you know that that has been playing that's what they say and i i think it, it's true i think it's wow. true yeah yeah you see she's she's <laughs> saying <laughs> <laughs> okay. wow. so it starts it yes. starts right away like right as soon as you are aware or as soon as you know mm. that it really starts from there yeah that's, that's great now oh, just thinking out loud you have mentioned this here on tv and i know that you are out there got to hear this and take it home but then there is one who does know about this and maybe they miss a chance of you know bonding when they're still in the stomach or when they're zero when they're two or when they're three or when they're four so how do you help someone that you know gives birth and doesn't know about all this like how can they now bond with their older children start just start just like, start. Uh, it's yeah. never too late well <laughs> it's harder when when they're older i mean I think most times it's very easy to 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 find your way around a young child. Mm -hmm. Like, um, I mean, the children who are around our spaces. If I get them a book to read and then I read with them, when you come back after a week, they'll say, "Uncle Paul, can can we read? You know, can we?" It's uh, the bond has already started. But an older child, it it it. it I mean, but you have to start like whenever. But all I know, I mean, in everything, the younger, the easier for for the parents to bond with them. Okay. Yeah. We will go. We will. Uh, we will get back to that a little bit uh, later. Mm. So, uh, what are the sure ways to build strong bonds with your children? Or how can one build strong bonds with their children? Um, I think one of the ways is to recognize the season they are in and what the needs are for them in that season. So as a baby, the baby just needs cuddles and, you know, feeding and, you know, soothing. The, the bond is, you're putting in most of the work, but the bond, that's what they need. A lot of physical space, you know, they can smell you and say, you know, mm -hmm. oh, my mother is here. So. Mm -hmm. In that season, they need presence. They need presence, they need affection, 
they are still still trying to wrap their hands around object permanence to know that when mommy goes she'll come back you know in the evening you know initially they are yelling every time you're leaving <laughs> but then they know oh no she's she she comes back and when she comes back we are together you know so resting their fears that are not spoken but the child psychologists call us to recognize. Mm -hmm. But then as, as they get older, by four years, they know their birthday. They have an idea of their birthday. They've started school. They want you to recognize their big days. They want you to recognize, they'll call and say, mommy, I can hope, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> hoping on one leg and they are hoping, they are hoping and they want you to clap and ce celebrate with them, you know. Mm -hmm. They are, they are then going to start, so every milestone mm -hmm. that they feel like today I actually did this. When you're with them and clapping for them, they feel like this is really my team, you know. Mm -hmm. Then they'll get to moments, they are trying to learn how to speak, you know, upload them. You know, they are trying to, uh, to, to, to pronounce different things, not in the right way, you know. Celebrate all their efforts and move with them. And then start to slowly know who their friends are, those people that are special to them, so that you can join in their world and know, you know, how do we nurture their friendships? How do we nurture the things that are important to them? You know, th that those are ways you're creating bonds. And then as they get older, start to, 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 to talk about the things that, you know, Initially, parenting is, is like, you know, don't do this, don't do that. But as, you, you, as they slowly grow, the, the angle changes that there is room for more friendship and you're just directing, you know. Create that room so they are able to tell you, Mommy, I found someone I really like. And, you know, they are able to tell you this, you know, their heart and their, you know, and you're able to give a listening ear. Mm -hmm. Not just as a parent, like, what? Mm -hmm. But I'm here, I'm not just your mother, I'm not just your father, I'm also your friend. Mm -hmm. Can we talk? Wow. Can we pray about this? Mm -hmm. But one of the other sure ways is being in fellowship with, with them. As, as, as Christians, one of the strongest bonds is in the church family. That's why you will meet a Christian for the first time and you'll already feel like, no, we can talk about as many things because the bond that we have with our Father, the Lord, and the, the, that purchase bonded us so strongly. Your children, you'll have a natural bond with them because the, they, have, they are the children the Lord has blessed you with. But then... When they come into fellowship with the Lord, that bond is, is even stronger because now your beliefs are, you know. So drawing them to the Lord is another thing. On Sunday, don't just leave them aside. Yeah, we will take it. Yeah, we'll take it yeah. I, mean, uh, I already enjoy this. I almost forget that we oh, forgot that we have to go off for a short break. Dear viewer, join me. Let's go off for a short break. We will be re we will be returning. Please don't. Touch that remote. Coming back. Hi, dear viewer. Welcome back from that short break. Thank you for keeping it chat of Uganda Family TV. And of course, as usual, my name is Claire Buende, your world's favorite host. And today we are talking about building strong bonds with your children. In case you just join in, our amazing, I don't I don't even know what to say. Oh great, great, great guest guests in our studio are the Zewars. Before we went for a quick break, they were telling us the sure ways to build a strong board with your children. And I think Esther, you will continue from where you had stopped. Thank you, Claire. Um, so I was talking about bringing them into your church fellowship so that your God will also be their God. Yeah, and the bond allows for continuity. So when they, they embrace your God, so as, as you go to church on Sunday, bring them in. During the, the fellowship, the church service, let them see you clap your hands to mm -hmm. God, you know, mm -hmm. even as children, so that they will grow knowing that this, this is the God of my father and mother, and he's a good God, and embrace that. That will be a good bond. So I think those are the ways, and I think my husband can add. Yes, Dr. Paul, <laughs> let's get it from you. <laughs> so, so yes, um, 
also you, you know routines yeah? mm. when you have uh, when you have routines that you set you may set them weekly the more f- the frequent the better R- routines where you have to be together with them the simplest of them is um, the eating meals together like supper especially for working parents who are busy it, it may not be a good idea for everyone to eat at their own time but they know that well at 6 30 at 7 we all come here and eat and then that's a starting point because you're all together um, then you could look at uh, also prayer time daily prayer time especially bedtime prayer like right you know after supper then bedtime prayer and then you're together that also brings you together in one way or another. Um, and the bedtime stories and that the, you uh, usually do, yes, they that's, like that's them. That's when they're little. I mean, yeah, when, yes, they're little. when they're little, you, 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 read, uh, you, you make a routine and say, every day we read this part of the Bible or mm-hmm. something good for the children. And yeah, that you will really bond with them. And then um, uh, when the weekend is coming, the girls will always ask, Daddy, uh, tomorrow is no school, mm-hmm. so... Uh, shall we take a walk because they know they don't have to sleep quickly they don't mm. i mean they don't have to sleep early because mm. tomorrow is a uh they will sleep they will sleep a bit longer mm. so spaces like those if you have a routine a randomness uh, uh, spontaneity is you may take a while but these uh, these children and bonds thrive on you know consistency and if you make it weekly you make it uh, as uh, every day mm. it's a very good space to to get a lot to, for them to receive from you and for you to receive from them mm. so that you have a, a very strong bond so yeah that's that's quite important for parents who intend wow, to wow 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 well, yeah. thank you thank you very much and i know uh the, the viewer is still asking so why is it necessary for us to to build these bonds with our children Mm. Why is it necessary to put in the hard work? I mean, I carried mm. you for eight, for nine months. Why does it, it come naturally? <laughs> Why should I have to put in the, you know, the hard work? Yeah. Paul, you're yeah. going first. I go first. Okay. okay. Um, for children, I mean, for parenting in 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 the parenting journey we are having. I am always reminded about the scripture that says, "Train up a child in the way of the Lord, so that when they grow." They will not depart from it. So uh, that I always feel like our time with the children is always we are teaching them, we are showing them, and we are trying to do the best God wants them to do, to be, you know. So how do you train somebody who you don't have a bond with, you know? How do you uh, tell someone, do not do this, yeah. but there's no connection with them, you know? And uh, because when you have a, a strong bond with them, when if you when you guide them, mm-hmm. which indeed you guide them properly, because you can't you 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 want the best for them. Every parent wants the best for their children. So whatever a parent tells you is is the best they feel they are doing, mm-hmm. and they will take heed yeah. because you know you're bonded with them. So they will try to do the best they can be because of you. And um, you really have to have a bond with them. It's it's good for them. It it will help them. You know, it will help them become the best they can be. Become what the Lord has planned for them to be. That's that's the way to do it. Yeah, as parents. Yeah. And then the the bond with with parents is quite a strong bond. A very important bond in a in a person's life. Of a the life, your lifespan, you will form many bonds with, with friends, with your spouse, with uh, different people you'll meet along. But I find that God has made this bond very important, that it affects the other bonds that you make later in life. For example, how I bonded with my father will affect how I probably bond with with him as as my husband will affect my choices on when, when I'm you know because I'm thinking no this is this is the bond so if but also we find identity from our, our parents so having that close connection is is a special way in which the Lord nurtures us 
I, I know that the, sometimes people even find difficulty in their walk with God because, because they, they are earthly relationship with their parents, their fathers are, are broken. So this, this bond is very, very important. Sometimes they say children, before they know who God truly is, because they, they have so many questions, even as they get to know who God truly is, you are their closest reference, you know, to who God is, to what love is, to... So this bond is, is very important. It's important to nurture it. And of course, as my husband said, they, they live after us. So we want, we want to train them up. We want to train them up so they can learn from us. They can get our values and then they can go out into the world. Yeah, well, that you can get a, a mini you or a whole you. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the, the objective is not of you. God. Mm. The objective is <laughs> how how best can they be what the Lord wants, wants them, them to, to be. be. Yes. Yes. I like yeah. that. I like yeah. that. Yes. I think that's so true. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Wow. Thank you. Thank you very much. So how? Anyways, um. I, I believe a viewer out there would want to know. I know they're already asking themselves because I know everyone wants to be, you know, a better dad, a better mom. So how can one be really a better mom, a better dad at this? Making the point. I think I think the, the, the better mom one should recognize that motherhood is a calling. We 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 don't choose to be mothers. The Lord wills that we are mothers. And when he gives us children, we need to recognize that these children are first the Lord's and we are stewards. We are stewards. The Bible talks of a story of the, the, ten, the, the ones that got the talents. And when God entrusts you with something, one child, two children, six children. There are those that have adopted children. There are those that have children of mm. relatives. When God brings someone under your care, he's entrusting you to be his hands, his feet, his eyes. So we need to recognize that we are stewards, first of all, and that God desires that we do a good job. But this good job we cannot do without him. So we need to surrender this assignment to him yeah. when solomon had been entrusted to be the king of, of israel he said in a dream god said what do you want and he said you know what the truth is these are your people that i am leading and unless you give me wisdom i don't know where to start from so i think as mothers we our place of strength is in is on our knees is in praying and asking God, God, will you give me wisdom? Every one of the children he gives you is unique in their purpose, in their calling, in their character, in their, you know. Mm -hmm. So how do you make the most out of each child? Only with the wisdom of God, mm -hmm. you know. And when he talked about bonding even right in the stomach, mm -hmm. we see in the Bible the mothers of, of, of Samson, the mother said, how do I, you know, even act at conception? And God said, don't take alcohol, don't what, this baby is really going to be hmm. different. So mothers sought God even before the children showed up, you know, and got confirmations, Elizabeth and Mary, and said, surely this child is, you know, so it's good to remain, our place of strength is in our communion with God. And so as mothers, let's surrender to God. Some seasons are exhausting. Some seasons, it's not easy to parent. It's not easy to love our children unconditionally. But we have to find uh, our encouragement in the Lord. But also, uh, another thing is to recognize the sacrifice. We talked about it earlier. And I can't really overemphasize it. This has a cost to it. We can't gain everything else in the world, be the CEO in, you know, and be the head of this and be the head of this. But our children see us just once a year or really don't know who we are. They, they've read about us in papers. They've seen our 
publications. They've seen us on TV answering reporters, but we take leftovers to them. I think we need to leave room and know that we are first this calling mm -hmm. before we are these other callings. If, 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 if I, uh, like, our children, they can't easily get another mother. It's not like an instant. But I've seen, I've seen first-hand job applications, like job adverts that come out after the person has not even been gone two, three days four days a week eh? and they say oh the bank is advertising or something because that work must move on <laughs> but when you go you don't you're not just replaced mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know so recognize that the spaces where you can't be replaced are the places that you must put the fo most of the focus on mm -hmm. and then find a balance with the other places so that you're not burnt out to give your very best to the children mm -hmm. and again like i said recognize it's a season the needs keep changing mm -hmm. but every season builds on to the next because my husband said it's not easy to bond with all the children mm -hmm. so the earlier you start the better mm -hmm. but it's never too late yeah. so as mothers let's find our place in god and then let's 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 do our best and then god will make a way for mm -hmm. us Mm. Because these are his children mm. anyway. They are, yes. They are his children mm. and we are only stewards. Yeah. 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 Um, uh, maybe mm. just one more would be um, to be a good parent, you also want to, you don't want to. The only way you can parent well is being the example. Um, people, everybody knows that children don't, um, they usually say they don't listen to what you tell them. They will see, you know, if, 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 uh, if you say respect one another, they have to see it. They have to see how you speak to their teachers, how you speak to their friends, and they will build up on that, you know. They have to see that you pray. You, you wouldn't ask them to go to church and then you stay home, you know, they want to see you doing that. They want to see you, you know, if you say do your housework, they want to see you also doing mm -hmm. part of whatever, I mean, you're doing something, they are doing something. So um, for being a, also in addition to what we've seen, being a good parent, you have to be a, you have to be an example of mm -hmm. everything you want them to be or to learn from you. Yeah. Wow, I like that. What you're sharing is so oh, so deep. I think we need a moment of silence to first digest this as very like seriously. That's so true. That's so true. That's so true. They will do. They will actually do what you're doing. Yeah. Oh my God. So yeah. we have to lead by example, just yeah. like you mentioned. And Esther, you met. You also stated that you know we have children that the Lord has trusted us with, and you know etc etc. So. How, what's your advice to someone that has children that the Lord has, you know, trusted him or her with? These are not biological children. And maybe they have come in when they are older, like we, we said, maybe 17 plus. How can one bond with such children? Remember, mm -hmm. that person didn't give birth to them. Yeah. So how can they bond? Yeah, that's... Um... For starters, I have not had that experience yet, but I will, I'll, I'll speak my thoughts, I'll still share my thoughts. I think that when a child is, is older, there's, there's so much, there's bits of their journey that you have missed out on. And uh, sometimes you need to be intentional mm. you may not catch up on all the last the, the you know mm. but to share some to understand some of those that are pertinent mm. some sometimes they come from a place of brokenness you know sometimes mm. they they've lost their parents and they are hurting but you know you're now their next refuge but you're still mm. not you know the bond is not yet there for them to they have their fears. They don't know what they can trust you with or they can't trust you with. Sometimes they have had a healthy relationship, but sometimes it's not been healthy where they've come from. And I think <clears throat> recognizing that we there are bits of where they are coming from 
and trying to catch up on those for the start is, is, is something that has to be intentional. The seasons that they are in, for example, uh, te teenagers or, you know, the older you get, the more you're trying to build your independence. And as a parent, you're now trying to say, can, can you create some room for me to know you? And you're being careful to see that they don't, the reaction is not to back away, but you know, so you approach it from a place of prayer, but also a place of wisdom, you know. Sometimes you can first share a bit of their familiar spaces, some of their friends yeah. and invite them over and try to create, mm -hmm. You're not being too much, but you're there. Mm -hmm. You're really present there. Yeah. You know, celebrating their birthdays. What would you want? Or what wouldn't you want? Mm -hmm. I've had people that go on dates just, you know, with just a child and just trying to focus on those. It's a gradual process. Mm -hmm. It's a gradual process. But then you have to be intentional. And then you have to realize, you have to ask the Lord to give you Again, his hands, his feet, his eyes, his mm -hmm. mind, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. you'll be able to understand this person that has come in. Mm -hmm. But, you know, there's also room to, to, to speak with other parents that have yeah. had similar experiences and have, you know, sailed through it. Mm -hmm. So all those spaces, you, you have to seek them out intentionally and say, God, this child has not come into my space by mistake. Mm -hmm give me the, the wisdom, lead me to where so I can understand who he is and take him in, take her in even mm -hmm. at this age and play my part. Yeah. So wow. mm -hmm. I think I think that would be one of yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. So uh Doctor Paul, are there some challenges you have faced in trying to build a strong bond with your children? Yes, uh, many, <laughs> many. Um, <clears throat> just what life is, you know. Um, being busy, um, you get so busy, and then um, here you are trying to be intentional, but you're tired. You know, like the girls just need time. They want to ask you questions, but you're very tired. You've mm. had a long day. I you've know. had a long week, and then you say, you know, I I have to be a parent, mm -hmm. so. I need to listen because sometimes they're not even asking anything but you're like I'm 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 too tired to listen to nothing. <laughs> so so then you 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 try your best but that that can be pretty hard, mm -hmm. you know. Um yeah, mostly the busy schedules uh putting in the energy mm -hmm. even when you're not so busy but you know you we talked about the routines so you probably don't feel like walking with them for 30 minutes mm -hmm. but the schedule says that it's a holiday mm -hmm. and they say we want to go for can we go for a walk mm -hmm. can we you know that bonding time and then you have to quickly say yes let's go mm -hmm. you know because it's it's what we do mm -hmm. so those can be a challenge also uh, some children um are uh, if you if you have not bonded with them or if you do not know them they may not talk you know i, I mean uh, one of our daughters quickly tells you the whole uh, what she's gone through the whole day she you just ask a question and you know everything another daughter takes her time so you may not be patient i mean you need to know them as you born then you're like okay but i have to know you have to tell me uh, what did you do? What did you have for lunch? Um, okay, did they take your pencil away? Did you take someone's pencil? Did you? What did you do? And then you have to be very patient to wait uh, for them to to connect with you, and then you start to connect. So those can be the challenges where you try to make sure you're not you you you, have, you come back home quickly. Uh, where you have long weekends, you say okay. Let's uh, we 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 have something tomorrow, so we have to be home today the whole day just because of them. Oh, and then maybe we have to take them with us so that we have time together with them and things like that. So those are things you you have to sometimes are not easy to do, but they come as a challenge, and then you force them onto yourself just to to build the bond and become a good parent. Yeah. 
Wow. Well, yeah. thank you very much. Yeah. I wish I wish I wish. Oh my God, my producer is already telling me time up. <laughs> well, please give us your parting shots in just a few seconds, and then we sign out. I think my parting shots are that children are a gift from god i was thinking the same thing (laughs) 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 and we are we are stewards so may we may we be good stewards yeah yeah. Wow. Thank you. Thank yeah. you very much. Yeah. Beautiful. She really yeah. said it. She said. I mean. I mean. Just knowing that <laughs> they are. They are a gift from God. Mm-hmm. I mean. This is. No matter what you look at, how you look at it, this is a gift from God. This is a good thing from God. A blessing from God. Because they say, blessed is a person mm-hmm. who has them. I mean. That's how it. That's mm-hmm. how the verse mm-hmm. ends. So. Children are blessing from God. Mm-hmm. Also, you know, we have to train them up uh, with the bones and uh, so that they may not depart. Um, and then also the Bible says that uh, we have to raise godly offspring, you know, we have to raise godly children. That's very important. Um, our, our, the children uh, have to grow up knowing God. They have to, to learn to, 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 to learn to worship God, to learn to fear God from the, their parents. So I think parents have a, a big mandate to do, to raise their children. So that's quite, uh, that's wow. really important, yeah. Wow, oh, thank you, thank you very much. I only wish you had more time because uh, I've enjoyed this show. I've enjoyed this show. Thank you very much, the Ziwa. It's been a great pleasure to have you here. Please hope to see you again. We need yeah. to finish this. <laughs> <laughs> and to you, our dear viewer, we love you so, so very much. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for loving Church of Uganda Family TV. And above all, thank you for loving the Family Hour. Don't forget to catch it up again on Monday, Tuesday, Friday, th- Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. With Adrian Austin Kalazi, I'm coming back on Friday. Mm. See you then. I love you. It is a bye-bye and God bless you.